guys. So I just wanted to kind of get back into the videos again and kind of talk about all these different things that I've been buying and restoring and fixing up lately. My latest project that I just got is a 2019 Diamond C tilt trailer. Um, I've wanted something like this for a while. Uh, I ended up getting it at a really good price, but it's pretty beat up. As you can see, the top is pretty, pretty worn out. Um, it's got uh, bent metal everywhere, so I was going to work on fixing all that kind of stuff up. Um, so my next project is kind of tearing the wood all off of this thing and uh, figuring out uh, exactly what's going on with it so I can get it all true and square and, and back out on the road safely again. Um, one of the biggest issues that I got to overcome is the, it, I can't tell if the axles are bent, but the tires are just a little bit off. I, I believe it's the shackle mounts, but I'm not 100% sure. So I got to kind of get the wood off to kind of really truly get under there to see what's going on. Um, I'm not too concerned about it at the moment because the price that I got it for, um, I really do want to kind of get the thing restored and, and uh, get it road worthy again. Um, kind of just a little bit of a rundown of it. Um, pretty cool. It's got a tilt system. So it has a, a cylinder dampener to allow it to come from crashing down on itself. Um, it needs to be air bled. It still works and everything, but needs to be air bled. Um, the, it looks like the front jack got hit, um, going across. And like I said, there's dents everywhere on it. Uh, it's got a pretty big storage bay underneath here, which is pretty neat. But other than that, pretty cool little trailer. Uh, definitely is better than the trailer that I had um, by far. So pretty excited about it. I'm gonna try driving my backhoe up onto it now because I'm concerned that the backhoe might drag in the back. So we'll kind of see what, uh, how that goes out here in a second. Decided that that went pretty well a little back heavy for sure I gotta definitely have make sure I got weight on the front end before I do that again but uh, other than that pretty excited so next step here is trying to figure out a way to get all this wood off and uh, kind of go from there all right I think the best way to approach it is cutting along each cross member to try to get these off because the bolts are pretty uh, stripped out and rusted so uh, the chance of me getting those broke loose are slim to none so let me see how this goes and we'll go from there
All right, guys, so I didn't really want to show all that because there was a lot of using the sledgehammer to kind of knock the little pieces off, but I got all the wood off today. Um, tomorrow I'm gonna try to get some of these dents worked out with a hammer and some and a heating torch. Uh <laughs> trailer restoration project that I got going on. Um, in the last couple of slides that I showed you, I took it over to my adult education class over at eHobi. Um, we did some welding and some different things. Um, I kind of showed you guys when we were taking off the wood, there was some damage. Uh, there was some de dented metal, some cracks. Um, the front jack was hit, so it was bent. Um, and what else did we fix? Oh, some of the rails were bent down, probably due to over overused and overweighted. Um, so, kind of just show you guys what we did here. So, we ended up replacing these two runners here. Um, it kind of sucks that it rained here while I was trying to get the trailer into the garage. Uh, just a little bit of moisture caused all this surface rust, but I'm not too concerned about it just because I'm gonna, I'll take some Scotch-Brite and just uh, recondition the metal and get it back to uh, ready to be painted. Um, so what we did at class was we kind of, there, everything was kind of bent and ding, so we heated up the metal, bent it in with a hammer. Um, then this took most of the work. Um, what we ended up doing is the old jack was up uh, farther up here. Um, so what we did was we cut out the original mounts and re-welded in a new jack. Um, so far, pretty impressed. I got this one at Harbor Freight. Um, I heard some good reviews on it, and it was the actually the only jack in stock locally. So um, I'm going to give it a try, see how it goes, and uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, my thought processes of moving it back was I'm gonna to try to make a mount here for a winch so that I can uh, pull up uh, a, you know, any sort of vehicle that's not running or anything like that. The only problem is with that is that it's a tilt deck. So my thought process is on to, uh, if I ever get a, a car that won't run or anything like that that I need to use a winch, is I'm gonna probably somehow have to mount um, ramps in the back somehow 
and I'm not sure how I'm gonna tackle that yet. So I think I'm gonna have some sort of ramps going underneath uh, that I can pull out if needed. Again, it's a tilt deck, so I probably won't need it all the time, but I really would like to be able to hook up a winch to this trailer and use it in case I have an issue out on the trail with my Jeep or anything like that. So um, the game plan here is obviously get the wheels off. I'm gonna go through all the bearings. The biggest problem that I see is the axles are bent. So this side is pretty good. This side is what's rough. So if you guys can see down there, um, it's probably easier to go from the front looking back. So don't mind the mess. We got all kinds of projects going on here at the house, but the I believe this front axle is bent out and that one is bent in. So I am gonna make a separate video on how I'm gonna tackle those. Um, but for right now, all I'm gonna get done is I'm gonna pull the tires off check the bearings and the, and the drums and go from there. And I'm probably gonna drop the axles just because it'll probably be easier to get them straightened that way. Um, but yeah, so I appreciate you guys watching this so far and we'll keep going. guys back at the trailer project today um, little update uh, ran out of ran out of energy last the other night so um, we got the nuts off of the bolts for the leaf springs um, I got one over here that is seized up so we're gonna bring out the rosebud heat it up and see if that works if not I'm just gonna cut it off because I'm probably not gonna use the bolts anyhow um, so yeah, goal is to get these axles dropped. Um, I'm gonna measure them because I was originally going to bend the axle back, but uh, my game plan with this trailer is I'm probably gonna be using it a lot for hauling my tractors around. So I'd really like this thing to be trustworthy and dependent. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and order a new axle. I just need to get a measurement. So we're gonna get these axles dropped and go from there. Placing these axles um, in order to get accurate measurements um, the, they give you like lengths and what kind of drop down and everything else so um, I measured the drop down is four inch but when they give you the length um, we got to go from this face the face that the wheel sits on or the rim sits on to the other side um, and that will give you your overall 
uh, axle length when trying to replace them. Um, so I'm going to get that measurement now and see what we got. So what I like to do is I use a paintbrush just to kind of keep things a little bit cleaner, but we're going to paint on a little bit of grease, even around where the grease seal goes, just to make sure that that rubber seal is riding around nice and smooth. Now we are going to flip our drum over. And do the same thing on the inside of this drum. No need to be easy on the grease, pack it full. All right, now what we're going to work on is we're going to be packing our first bearing here, the one that's towards the rear. So I just, I grab a handful. And then I just kind of work it around just to kind of get it started. And then I come from the back side and I try to push in as much grease as I can. And then just keep moving it around and trying to get the grease packed into the bearing as best you can with your fingers. You want to make sure that this cavity and that cavity is all full of grease. And then just keep working it around. That looks pretty good. All right, we're going to drop that in there. And then we're going to take our seal, take just a little bit of grease, and I'm going to put on that rubber seal there. All right. I'm going to take my hammer and just gently tap that in. Just to where it's flush with that surface. Alright, now I am going to get a new set of gloves here. Process, just kind of working it all in there. It's a messy job, but in order to keep the wheels from falling off on your trailer, this is best practice. So, the wheel bearings that I took off this trailer weren't terrible, but if I'm in here, I might as well replace the bearings. Obviously, this. The previous owner overweighted this trailer, and I just didn't trust those bearings in the condition that they were used in. So we grabbed a new set of nice Timken bearings. What's nice is there should, if the bearing isn't completely shot, there should be a number on the back of it, and you should be able to take that number and just plug it into Google and quickly find what bearing was previously used. So on the other one, I had to kind of gently tap it in. I don't know if they're just 
a little burr, but you want to tap on the metal casing, the thicker part, just gently, just to kind of get it to, to seat in. No, again, nothing crazy, just to kind of get that fully seated. All right, so this is the new axle. It's a little bit different than that one. Um, that one's got a little notch in it with the washer. So how I like to do this when tightening this axle nut, I use whatever socket you can get to fit it, snug it up just a little bit, and then spin it. So the noise that you're hearing is just the new brake pads touching the outside of the drum. And what you want to do is you just want to make sure that this drum is completely seated. So we're just going to keep spinning it and making sure that it doesn't loosen up. It's staying pretty tight. Now what I like to do is I like to snug it up. Now we're going to go back quarter turn. Just enough where it feels like it's just tight, but isn't over tight. And then we're going to see where our pin goes. This one came out a little bent here. Something happened with this one here. This doesn't want to go in all that smooth. Fully seat that, and then we're just going to bend our pin around to prevent this nut from backing off. Again, not terrible of a job, you just don't want to make sure you over tighten the bearing nuts because it really can't come off, but you don't want too much slop, especially in a heavy duty trailer, you definitely don't want too much slop. Alright, we're going to time lapse the rest of them.
looks like we finished this project up today. So kind of going to go over a rundown of what we actually did to this trailer. Uh, as you guys know, this trailer that I bought was a little bit beat up. So we ended up doing a lot of welding on this trailer. So I'm going to kind of give a rundown of what we did and what future, what, what we're going to do in the future to this trailer. So what we did, step one was we did, uh, we cut out the front jack and we put in a new one. So the one got hit and we ended up re-welding in new structural supports and added in this new system here. I also added in this winch mount. So I was really wanting to add a winch to this trailer because I um, the, few, the other trailer that I had did not have a winch and there was plenty of times that I had a broken down vehicle or I was buying something that wasn't running and I had no way to get it onto the trailer. So I really wanted to add a winch to this trailer here. So in order to do that, I had to add ramps so that I could ramp, you know, so I could ramp up a vehicle or whatnot onto this trailer. So we ended up welding in runners so that I could slide the ramps in and out. I still have to make a locking mechanism. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but uh, that, that'll just take a couple minutes. I pulled out the hydraulic system um, for the dampening of the tilt deck. I'm gonna rebuild these since I've already gotten this far on this trailer. So I got these set here. Uh, we added in some new structural supports that were bent. I added in new wheel wells. The ones that came with it were removable and they were really flimsy. So anytime, if you would come out of a vehicle or anything like that, step on these, it, they weren't gonna hold any sort of weight. So I ended up uh, making new wheel wells out of two inch channel in here. So it'll give us some rigidity. He used some diamond plate material uh, that I had left over on another project. We also added in some spare tire holders. They're a little bit lower than I wanted, but I didn't have anywhere else to mount them. So I'm gonna try to mount up a tire to see if it's too low. If not, I might have to relocate those. We also mounted this rail back here to allow the ramps to sit on. So this way, I, if I need to pull out the ramps, I need to winch something up, I, all I have to do is just clip them in and winch a vehicle on. Other than that, the next few stops that I'm, the, the next few things that I'm gonna do this trailer is I'm gonna get the wire wheel out and I'm gonna wire wheel the entire trailer to try to clean it all up and then I'm gonna paint it. So that's gonna be the next video that I'm gonna post, but I, I, wanted, I didn't wanna do it all in one because uh, there's just a lot of work that was done to this trailer. I hope you guys like what the video and please never hit never forget to hit the subscribe button and please leave any comments below to make sure that I can do a better job on these future videos. Thanks.